Hello everyone and welcome back. Today's session is covering another grapple grenade build, but combining it with one of my all time favourite exotics to use, which is Felwinter's Helm. I have covered this exotic with all the new subclasses in game, and now Strand with grapple grenades are a combo literally designed for Felwinters. For those that don't know, grapple grenades are considered both a grenade and melee in one, which allows us to make use of our grenade and melee mods for double the benefits. Even though we have a separate melee ability that we will use, Grapple offers more to user considering how often we can use it. So for the best Strandfair Winter Helm build around, you can get a 30% debuff applied to targets over and over again as long as your grenades is around. On top of that, your tangles can get your melee energy back, can get your super up in seconds, can have a strong threadlings as backup, and your grenade regen speed will always be on top. So let's dive in. To start, you're going to want to have Weaver's Call where casting a rift will produce three threadlings and deploy any threadlings on you. You'll then want Mindspun Invocation to enhance your grenade, which will be Grapple Grenades. Grapple offers the most of players in terms of allowing us to use both our melee and grenade regen mods in one. This allows us to build into both areas without needing to build into the stats itself so much. Just like the last build we did, as long as we have enough mods dedicated towards our grenade cooldown rate, we can leave a melee stat low but still use beneficial strength mods that will give us an edge once being used. This will be a close quarters build, even though Fair Winters does have some range to it, depending on the enemy type. However, you may want to add on any mods or abilities that will give you that extra layer of protection, just so you can survive for longer while using it. And looking into the fragments, I've chosen a setup that's going to build into what defines the setup as a whole. A Thread of Warding, picking up all the power grants us Woven Mail. Thread of Fury, Damaging targets with Tangle grant melee energy. Thread of Generation allows damage to generate grenade energy. And Thread of Evolution allows Threadlings to travel further and deal additional damage. Out of the form, Thread of Warding and Fury will be a must, as an extra 60% damage reduction on top of our current resilience stat is going to allow you to survive for longer while out. The Fury now is going to allow us to use our charge melee more, which we get free to use, and this will be helpful when we don't have any grenade left. The threat of generation is of course important as well, but I decided not to mention it as this strength with all strand builds are already commonly known. For the mods and stats section, you're going to need to have a lot of grenade based mods to help with reducing the cooldown rate for your abilities, but also investing in resilience and strength as well, which will also make a huge difference for the user. Grapple grenades will need to have a high discipline and grenade regen rate so that we can build everything we are doing into one and thus be able to provide a non-stop debuff to anyone nearby. Ideally, tier 8 to 10 is going to provide the most useful amount of grenade regen when using it out in public, without mods included. You'll then want to follow this up with two grenade kickstart mods, one absolution mod, and one bomb mod. Grapple grenades already have a relatively low cooldown rate compared to the other grenades offered, so combining this with our current base stat of tier 10 with the mods and further generation, this will be enough for you to easily get back your grenades after the first use. From here, some of the armor charges recommended for the build are charged up and stacks on stacks, which is going to be giving you a plus one to charge stacks, so your overall get four charges when active. Next, you're going to want to have the heavy handed mod, so your grenade melee effect can produce orbs of powers on kills, and then strand siphon mod for producing orbs of power via strand weapons if you have one. If you don't, then of course, connect siphon mods or any other mods are viable. Do remember that you can have firepower mod on as well, to get double orbs of power once created via grapple alone. Lastly, we have two Ashes of Assets mods so we can get our super back quickly, and the Proximity Ward mod where doing a finisher will grant you a powerful overshield, which works out really well with the woven mail and high resilience stats. Resilience can be tier 7 to 10 depending on your mod space, but ideally having the max stat will yield you the most benefits. Strength can stay at tier 3 or 5 as although we'll be using it, Fred of Fury will help us out with granting us a full charge with each tangle used. Now lastly the weapons being used will be strand and void related like last time as they pair up really well. The quick silver storm with its catalyst works really well with strand builds even though it's slightly bugged in terms of damage. Once you get the catalyst and complete it, Getting a kill with a grenade launcher will allow your weapon to create tangles on kills, which when paired with Thread of Fury, will give us a near infinite amount of charged melee at our disposal. 
You can of course just use Monte Carlo with the build as that works 99% of the time. However, this method is better as the DPS being done by the weapon is still pretty good when compared to Monty's. Plus, compared to other Fell Winter Monty builds, we do not need to fully build into just melee alone to benefit from Fell Winter. This is where the advantage of using Strand as a whole for melee builds comes in for a number of content. I also decided to use the Ragnant Grenade Launcher with Spike, Auto Loading, and Cascade Points for perks. Although Wendigo last season had its pros, the following grenade launcher is easy to get and really good when it comes down to quick DPS within a few hits. It's not going to melt bosses, but once Cascade Point is active, this will allow you to increase your weapon's fire rate to eat through their health compared to a standard grenade launcher. Heavy is more down to the user and anything hard hitting will do the build just fine. Just be careful when using grenade launchers or rockets in close space. Now for the conclusion of the build, a Felwinter's Helm has been both loved and hated by the community because of how much it requires players to use a melee for 90% of the content, which feels more like it should be for a Titan rather than a Warlock. Now I have no issues with Felwinters as you have two ways to proc his debuffs, and the fact that his debuff of 30% is really strong and his blinding effect is also quite wide, this to some are still not worth using in most PvE content. If Fell Winters can easily suppress a whole room if just one debuff on the target is pulled off just right, and that huge multiplier you get from doing so is going to make the content even more smoother. The reason why it's so good with Strand is how often you can pull off the debuffs and build into it to do more damage as you go. While in the past we had to build into the strength stat to get the most out of it, now you can use your grapple grenade, melee, and then see its effects there and then. And once that's done, depending on your armor charge, you can repeat this as many times as you like. This is all achieved without the use of Monte Carlo or Traveler's Chosen or any other additional mods, just your exotic, grenade, and grenade mods to help. In many ways, this is one of the pros to armor builds 2.0, as the simple nature of the mods and how you go about it means that we can stack as many buffs as we like and make it easier for a lot of others to follow. Of course, it's not a GM build because of how tanky damage being sent to you is going to be, but anything master level, I can see it being really good with suppressing areas and then combining it with the enhanced threadlings means easier cleanup with less weapons being used. The fact that we have two ways to suppress on a large scale isn't so much common in most builds unless it's a seasonal mod being used. Love it or hate it, a Felwinter's Helm with Grapple can make most content even more easier than normal, but also it brings in a lot of fun when running this with Grapple. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared then please leave a comment below while at the same time if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future then leave a like on the sub bar here. I will leave a dim link for the build below and if you want more stuff like this then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you all again soon.